I thought that uh, what I would do is talk about okay the points on pool cues and how they relate to playability. I'm trying to see, I can't tell how how great the light is for this or if it's glaring. All right, so what we have here are the the cues in my collection that are. They have points or veneers. Okay. So they're all a little bit different and they all play a little bit different. But I can tell you this. Okay, compared to a key that is like this right here, which is an absolutely fantastic key, that's a McDermott. But that has no points. This is all one piece of wood all one piece of the same type of wood, you see. That cue plays great, however, I cannot work the cue ball the same with that as I can with any of these, these three. Now we're gonna push that one over there. Okay, and I say these three, this is a vintage cue over here. That right there is a 1970 Brunswick. Let's start with that one. Okay, that, the way that's been made, that, you can tell by looking at that, that it's a full splice cue. It's not a inlay cue. It's because you can see both sides of the points. So you can see that side of the point and that side of the point. And you see the veneers. Some people would think this was a Titleist, that Brunswick. But that is not a Titleist. It's a 1970 Schmelke era Brunswick. It's a little bit later than the Titleist. However, it's basically the same. So they'd already been making the Titleist full splice. Then Schmelke started making it. That is a full splice cue. But it's obvious because the way that it's been made, you can see both sides of the splice. Now let's move to this one. This is a Moochie. I love playing. This is the key that I tend to play with. Okay. If not for this one to the right but they're totally different. Um, this cue is questionable whether it's a full splice. I, you know, Moochie makes a lot of full splice keys. However, this cue is under $300. And see how you can't see the end of that point like you can over here? Well, that means that if you look at that, then that makes that easy to be an inlay. So you just router that part out, put your inlay there, and then you've got something that looks like a point and it is a, it's it is an actual point because you're replacing one type of wood with another but it's not a full splice okay and now here's what's cool see this has no veneer although i can work the crap out of this key right here the reason i can work this key so much better than these other ones is because that's 20 ounces over here this is over 20 ounces over here okay this right here is like 17 and a half. The lighter the cue, and I've got a 11.6 millimeter tip on that one. So that's like 17 and a half ounces, 11.6 millimeter, and boy, and that one I can work the hell out of it. Okay, the one next to it, I know this is a full splice cue, but it's not obvious. Uh, because you see this, uh, the uh, point down here has been you know, they, they router this part out, they machine that part out and then put the, uh, put the wrap on. Okay. But out of all these keys, now the one on the left may be the most expensive. We haven't gotten to that one, but this one on the right is the, probably the best one. This is a John Davis blank. Okay. Made by a great key maker named John Spitz, 2009. Okay. And the John Davis blank, that's one of the guys that made blanks for George Balabushka. Along with Burton Spain. Okay, and then the Titleists over here, they, those, were the, those were similar eras. Now, that's not the Titleists, but the ones that came before that. This is a 1970. You might see this cue in a 69 or 70. And the 69s will not have a... A number stamped on the shaft in the butt area. 
that was done because that key was made in America but finished in Japan. So they had to imprint the, the serial number there to match them up when they got them back. All right, so the point is this key here, which is a very expensive key, you have to know what this is to know for sure that it's not an inlay because that could be an inlay because you can't see the end of the splice. But that right there, that is cool. So that, that is super cool, even though it's the oldest one. It's, and it's because you can see both sides. Okay? So that I know is full splice because I can look at it. This one I know is full splice because I know what it is, and that one's a question. Okay, now this <clears throat> is an expensive key, and it's got lots of points. Look how many points it's got. It's like one, two, three, four, five, or there, let's do it again. One, two, three, four, five. There's six points going in each direction, so there's 12. And up here, one, two, three, four, five, same. Is that right? <clears throat> so that's a 24 point cue in one way, but it's all inlays. So you see it's all inlay work. So a, a laser 3D machine has cut all that out and then they've inlaid it. And it's a predator, it's worth a lot. It's retired, but <clears throat> as far as a cue collection goes, it's kind of like a watch collection. Um, you can get your highly branded stuff that everybody loves and is easy to resell, by the way. Predators are easy to resell, okay? But then when you start getting deeper into it, then, not I'm not saying that one, but then you start getting to where you want some stuff like that right there. And definitely that right there. A cue from a, like a cue maker who's just kind of working by himself in a shop. So, okay, so the point is that, <clears throat> literally the point is that a cue, okay, we didn't talk about this, the veneers, okay. The veneers, if you get deep into this woodworking stuff, Okay, this is a Gabon Ebony, into Gabon Ebony with double holly veneer. So it's a little bit strange that they're using Gabon on that side, or on both sides. But what happens is when you use a lighter density wood in the veneer, you get like a little shock absorber. So this over here has got several veneers. A lot of people aren't going to be talking about that, but that that gives you a little shock absorber. It makes the key feel different. So if you th if you're playing with a lower price key like this, this is a McDermott. I love that key. It's awesome, and I've got a couple more. But if you're playing with one of these and you want to and you want to test some stuff out, move into a full splice key. That is what you want to start testing out because you won't believe you'll find a key that you can work that cue ball excellently. And I'm not saying the Predator's not great, but the point here is, literally, if you're going to have a pool cue, get you a pool cue with some points on it, and it's not because they're points, it's because of how it weights the cue, and how it balances the cue, and how it makes the cue perform. I'm not joking you. When I made it from that cue, using the same tip, the same shaft as I use here, because I had this Moochie made with a, with a uh, McDermott uh, pen. Okay, when I switched that shaft from that cue to this cue right here, I could not believe how much better I could work the ball. And the fact is, it's almost the same, they're almost identical in weight and size and everything. But you start changing around the, the, uh, material and it makes a big deal i am not kidding by the way this thing shoots i mean that thing is incredible gabon ebony into gabon ebony that thing is a solid shooter if i start getting off with this one i just move over to that one because that i can shoot the ball straight easier straighter easier so ladies and gentlemen that's it get yourself a pool cue with some points and start fooling around with different types of woods not that these are the points, but that right there is zero Coty. I think that is why I like playing with that. Gabon Ebony with double holly veneer. Over here, we've got some type of uh, maple. 
obviously it's not curly okay and then you've got the um what is that stuff called purple heart that's popular purple heart's popular in pool cues um over here we got another some more maple i don't know what um, i'm not totally sure what that is i did read up on it but i forgot and this is i believe rosewood rosewood and zero Coty looks very look very similar they have different finishes, but they're very similar. If this was glossy, I think it would look very much like that. So you can get rosewood and zero coty mixed up, confused. Purple heart is almost always looks like purple heart. That gabon ebony is real dark unless you get real close to it. Anyway, people, that's it. Get the point with John Masters. And let's play some pool. Bye.